Some new findings about the world's climate. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the planet experienced its second warmest April on record. In 2017 is the second warmest year to date. Last month also saw record low sea ice in the Arctic and Antarctic. Ahira Sanchez Lugo is a climatologist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. She joins us on the phone from Asheville, North Carolina. Um, Ahira, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us. Tell us what is uh, most significant about this in your estimation. Yes, uh, well, the most significant thing is that we've continued seeing warmth across the globe. Um, 2016 was record warm, but it was boosted mainly because of the uh, El Nino, the moderate to strong El Nino that was present across the central and tropical, eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. 2017, what makes it interesting is that there is no El Nino present. It, there are ENSO neutral conditions, meaning no El Nino, no La Nina. So, and with all that, it's really, really warm. It was, as you said, the second highest. And our period of record goes back to 1880. So mm -hmm. there's 138 years of record. So that means that the temperature for April in 2017 surpassed 136 of those temperature records. Um, only 2016 surpassed. And because of the strong El Nino that was present during the start of the year. And 2016 was ahead of 2017 by 0.31 degrees Fahrenheit. So remind us again here, just the, because you're dealing without it this year, mm -hmm. some more of the effects of, of El Nino from last year and other years. Well, El Nino not only impacts the weather, pattern, weather patterns across the globe, but we've tended to see that the global temperature records tend to increase. Um, the temperatures for the globe tend to be higher when there's an El Nino present compared to those years that there is no El Nino um, or in the presence of La Nina. La Nina is the opposite of El Nino where we see a usually cool uh, temperatures across the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. I hear what else did you find significant about this? For this month, um, this month uh, was extremely, there were across all land and oceans, the vast majority, of course, um, had warmer than average temperatures. There were some areas specifically across the land and oceans that did see cooler than average conditions. However, there were some areas that experienced record warmth. What we didn't see was no land areas or no ocean areas experienced record cold temperatures. And can you talk a little bit more about the um, the, the sea the record low sea ice um, in both the Arctic and Antarctic? Um, yes, I can talk about how um, for the Arctic sea ice we are now entering um, what we call a decline because it's the northern hemisphere um, summer. So now the Arctic sea ice starts to shrink. But what we've been seeing for the last, I want to say, three consecutive months, the Arctic sea ice extent has been shrinking, and it has been the lowest on record. And records go back to 1979. And the same is true for the Antarctic. This, uh, the Antarctic for the last several months has been record low, but for April was second um, lowest on record. Here, I'm going to actually be in uh, Greenland this, uh, this following week here. Oh, great. Um, yeah, so, I, I, so what, um, can you talk a little bit about what, what one uh, might, uh, might, might expect there compared to years past? I cannot right now okay. um, because I haven't checked um, All right. to see what's going on right now there in particularly. Well, I'll tell you what, when I get back, I'll report back to you. How about that? That, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Adhira Sanchez-Lugo, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.